Okay, we're gonna go ahead and be removing this bath uh, the bathtub. We just want to shower in here instead. So I'm gonna show you how to do it uh, step by step. So first thing you're gonna do is pull off all these uh, things on the right, which is your shower head, neck, and then uh, whatever you have below. Everyone's different, of course, your valve cover, but usually it's an Allen wrench like mine is right there. You can kind of see it, a little dot in them uh, by the handle, underneath the handle. An Allen wrench, take that off, pull off a couple screws, and that takes off the escutcheon. Then below that, your uh, bathtub filler, uh, spout is going to be just usually just turned off uh, just unscrew it you know to left righty tidy lefty loosey and then right below that your waist and overflow undo that screw and then the two more screws that hold it in tight and uh, you'll be ready to go okay uh, once we get that off then we'll start cutting her out and I'll do that I'll show you that how we do it so as we go Okay, if you want to remove the drain from the bathtub, so you go, put your, you buy a tool like this, they're about 10 bucks or 8 bucks, over at Home Depot, and uh, it looks just like the drain, it has a little hole in there. Uh, you take it, you take a regular crescent wrench, put it on there, and it unscrews, just like that. Simple as that. If you don't happen to want to buy one of these, because you're only going to use it one time, you happen to have a couple screwdrivers around, you can always put them like that, and then take your same crescent wrench, and it works exactly the same. It works exactly the same way. Okay, it comes right out. All right. So anyway, that's how you do it. All right. Either way, it's up to you. If you have any questions? Put them down below. Okay. Go ahead and just take your circular saw. Doesn't matter what kind. I happen to be using that one, but you can use anything you have available. Just cut around the entire perimeter like that. Uh, it's important to do what I'm saying uh, as far as you'll know um, if you're cutting like this you're not in any way endangering wires or plumbing that might be behind it. Um, lots of times and I've remodeled I find you know people electricians use running the wire running they you know nobody's gonna ever touch it so they don't even bother putting them in the walls they just run it around the machine and so you could be nicking that and they have to redo the whole darn thing or plumbing same thing people don't necessarily think anyone's ever going to use it again, that area again, so they, they take a shortcut and they put it right up against the uh, tub or right near it. So best you can, just put your blade relatively short distance out, quarter inch, three eighths or so, make your cuts. And then uh, once that's done, you're going to use a sawzall, uh, very limited. And that's why I don't want you to use the whole sawzall for the whole thing because that blade sticks in there and you could be doing all kinds of damage. Here you can still do some damage, but a lot less likely because uh, you're only doing little spots. You're gonna go from point to point with a sawzall. You know, and you're only gonna do point to point, try to stick as little blade as possible through the slot. And so you, you, if there is something back there, you'll try to do as little damage as possible. It's the only shot you got because you're doing it blind. There's no way to know what's behind this thing until you're done. And usually by that time it's too late. So the way I'm doing it is the most efficient way uh, to do it. So now at this point, you just match up all these spots with the sawzall, and the thing breaks into two pieces, and you can haul it out of there. Okay? Well, actually, this is the, I guess I should say this is the second step, sawzall in it. The third step, uh, after we get the tub out of there, all the pieces, we're going to be pulling out the surround part, uh, this part here that touches. Okay, we're going to be taking that part out next, after we get the tub out of here. Okay? Okay, once you... Uh, go on around and connect all the dots uh, so it's no longer uh, sealed anywhere. It's got, it's got literally a couple pieces. There's little parts still holding it together, little parts of wood or fiberglass or whatever behind it, but it all breaks out. Uh, so you can see how thin uh, this stuff really is, how thin it is. So it's not hard to do. You're just going to simply grab it uh, and yank it apart, okay? And uh, I'm not going to show you how to do that. It's pretty easy to grab it and you get out of there. And start dicing it up. More pieces, as you can see, there's nothing in your way. So in other words, you pull this piece off, you can look around behind it and everything. See there's no wiring or plumbing in the way. There's nothing in the way. You can be hurt. You can dice it into more smaller spots if you want to, you know? As long as you're able to see what you're doing behind the wall, you're fine. Anyway, you just take the easiest piece out first and then just start looking around and seeing what else is going to be easy. Okay? I thought I'd go ahead and show you the first piece. I just 
grabbed it and yanked it out, and as I told you, it's real thin. And once you cut it around like I showed you, then you just break it up that easy just by yanking out pieces. You don't have to have big giant chunks. You can just snap this thing in half just like that. Well, just like you saw what I did right there. Just it just breaks. Okay. Okay, I'll show you one more little video of taking it out. And you can see I just ripping it apart piece by piece. Okay. Like I said, occasionally you'll find a piece of wood stuck back there. But it rips off from that piece of wood easily too. So I didn't bother cutting through all the wood. I didn't care. You know, if you do, it does okay. But it doesn't matter if you do or not, you know. Um, just go ahead and just go around the whole thing. Just start ripping it apart. It all just falls apart. You know, I mean, it looks literally like that on the ground, you know. And just get it all out of there. And we're ready to start the next process. Okay, as you can see here, <coughs> like normal, the uh, water lines, you know, of course, pretty close to that. And then the supplies are also pretty close. And uh, so, again, you don't want to be cutting willy-nilly in these things. Um, you hit a, hit a line, you got to repair it. Uh, nobody wants that. And then, as you look through, turns out there's no electrical or other plumbing. So that's good. But at least we didn't hit it. Being safe, we didn't hit it. If we'd have found some, I could have shown you, ha-ha. So yeah, this is electrical. You would have cut it if you just went crazy. So take your time, do it right. Yank this thing out piece by piece. And... Uh, You'll be ready to start the next step. This is what the base looks like um, uh, on one of these things. You see it's pretty thick and gnarly. And so uh, you don't want to be cutting that. There's no reason for it. Um, you can just yank that piece up in one piece after you get all the fiberglass off. So yank your fiberglass piece out of there, get all the pieces out, and then you just pull that piece out last instead of trying to cut it. Because if you try to cut it out, you know, you could be hitting the bottom, uh, you know, your sub supports and everything else. So there's no reason for it. Once you take all the fiberglass out, that'll just fall out. It's just connected to the fiberglass. Okay, now to finally, you know, finally get the rest of this thing out of here. Your flange is nailed onto the studding. I have an inch and a quarter flange right here. Okay, it's an inch and a quarter out. You can put a line there and just put a level line all the way around, inch and a quarter, you know. So inch and a quarter higher than that. You know, go, you can go up an inch and a half, whatever, to make it easier. Um, just go around the entire thing, put a level line, and then use a sawzall, and, or if you have one, utility knife if you don't want to pay in the neck, or an oscillating tool. Um, any of those three things would be perfect for this job. Uh, once you pull that, once you cut it, um, once you cut it an inch and a quarter all the way around, or an inch and a half all the way around, I'm just going to pick that drywall out of there. You know, you take a utility knife, cut down the seam, and then you're already going to have the cut here. Cut down the seam and just pull that stuff out of there. And you'll, it'll reveal the flange. And the flange has fasteners attaching to the studding. Everywhere you see a stud, there'll be a fastener if they did it right. And so then you just pull out the fastener and it'll just fall right off. Okay. All right, here we go. The next part. <coughs> okay, so when you got your uh, piece um, all inch and a half uh, mark around the entire thing, then just start cutting it out. And uh, remember, the same thing applies. You know, you don't want to be in there gouging extra stuff. You know, even though you can look up here and see there's nothing up there or whatever. You know, you can you can kind of feel for stuff and see that there's nothing in the way. You still don't want your blade. You know, sawzall blades gigantic. It's way up there. You don't want to stick the thing in there and just go to town. You'd be hitting all kinds of stuff. You don't want to be wrecking anything. You just want to take out the drywall. So when you're doing it, uh, keep that in mind. And you know, you could use be really safe and use a utility knife, except for whatever thickness your drywall is. Mine's five eight, so and mine would be all the way out there. Yours would be a little less if you have half inch or something. But anyway, you could just use that, which takes a lot longer, and I'm not gonna do it. Oscillating tool is also a little bit uh, more safe because it doesn't go down as deep, but it can still cause damage. But sawzall is the fastest of all of them, but you just got to keep it at an angle to where you're only going in, you know, five eighths of an inch, three quarters of an inch. You don't want to be just jamming that saw blade in there and just going to town. Just skim along the side until you can turn it around and go for it, okay? All right. You can do it either before or after, but use your utility knife uh, to cut that um, line against the uh, against the fiberglass unit. You know what I mean? And you're going to be cutting this part out with a sawzall or something else, and then you're going to be using a utility knife 
to score that uh, silicone or caulking and so it'll separate the drywall okay okay as I said uh, cut all around the entire thing just be careful cut around the entire thing uh, just be careful you don't stick your blade in too far um, as I was saying your uh, oscillating tool um, you're going to use that the blade only goes in so far but still even then it could hit something you know you got to only stick it in as far, just a little bit deeper than the drywall and uh, so anyway as, you, as soon as you do that it'll start falling apart you know just come off and then it reveals the flange and reveals a fastener so these fasteners happen to be screws we'll just unscrew that and it will do that all the way around wherever there's a fastener and then once we do that it'll all be ready to come out the rest of it okay okay so i haven't pulled the rest of it off yet but i pulled off the one side that's what your flange looks like and it just has a few fasteners in it you know i pulled, I pulled those out already so that's it and then this piece will be ready to come out as soon as i'm ready to pull it out okay and i'll just continue around the whole thing but that's what the flange looks like that's what you're looking for okay now that you got all the fasteners out around the entire thing uh, it just literally falls out at this point there's nothing securing it to the wall because you've already done all the work so it just falls apart anyway break it up and throw it in the trash you're all set then we can start doing our next installation okay this will wrap up removing a uh, shower stall or a bathtub stall whatever a big bathtub shower surround uh, what it looks like uh, when you're all finished and I uh, just wanted to point out again why you want to be safe. For the most part, you don't see anything here, but I want to point out a couple things. One, because the bathtub is one of the first things installed when you build a house. When the framing goes up, before the, all the framing gets up there, you got to install these big tubs. The only way to get them in the door. So the, the bathtub's already installed. So the electrician, whoever this was, did this, ran this wire around there up to this plug, uh, which is a microwave uh, in the other room, and uh, they didn't care because, you know, there was a tub there. And uh, it was never going to move. So what the heck, they didn't care. So they didn't put it in the wall like they should have. Drilled, drilled a hole through the stud and put it in the wall. They did not. Over here, you can see another wiring situation. Again, the guy just uh, drilled through because, you know, the tub was there. There's no reason they could go anywhere. It'll be fine. So they put that other white wire you can see right there uh, all the way through it. And again, you don't know what's going to happen when you're behind these walls, okay? So when you go to cut things out, be really careful because you don't know anything what's behind there. Anybody could do anything stupid. You can't trust on uniform building code because people just don't care. So be safe, you know, be safe when you're cutting out so you don't have to cause more damage and then spend time fixing stuff instead of getting done to the project you want, okay? All right. Have a good day. If you have any questions, put them down below.